Welcome back everyone. So this is the part three of our CRUD operation series. In this part, we are going to cover the read operations. The read operations basically cover the searching, sorting and pagination activities. The tech stack which we are going to follow is Next.js as our framework, database is MySQL and Prisma will be our ORM. The knowledge which you are gathering throughout these CRUD operation series can be implemented to the React framework or to the any other database like SQLite, MongoDB, the database is supported by Prisma. To give you a context, what exactly are we going to cover? I've created a simple query structure in front of you. You can see on the left hand side, there is a select statement which is joining two tables and you have got conditions, group by clause, having clause and order by. All these activities enable you to get the data from the system, to get the data from your database, also to apply filters, to apply the ordering mechanism and also apply pagination on your data. We are going to see how we are going to use Prisma to enable us to write down the same sort of query. The methods which we are going to cover during this session is find many. There are multiple options under find many, find unique, find first, group by, count, aggregate, sorting, pagination, and we are going to, at last, we are going to talk about the raw query. If you have got a different sort of query, which is not supported by Prisma, you can write down your own SQL statement and run that on your database. At last, I'm going to show you a very simple example to get the parameters from the page and pass that into your database query and run that into your database. One thing I would like to recommend is to bring your notes together or try to pause the video wherever you think you need more time to follow along. Don't rush into completing the entire video in one stretch. You can take as much time as you need because this is not an entertainment video. This is educational video which you have to follow along to get the concepts cleared. So let's jump right into it. Uh, before moving further, in the previous part, we have covered the MySQL setup how to create models. You can go into my channel and follow for the part two. If you are interested to install SQLite database on your machine, then you can follow along the Prisma and Next.js video. If you're liking the videos which we are building, do give our videos a like, share your thoughts in the comment section, share it with your friends and do subscribe to our channel. It's absolutely free. Thank you so much. So let's get started. To get started on this video, Firstly, let's do a quick recap what we have done in the previous part. If you open the .env file, you can see we have enabled our MySQL database, which I'm running on my local host. If I go to Prisma, schema.prisma file, you can see three models are created, user model, to-do model, and tags model. There is a relationship between user and to-do's model, that is one to many. Between to-do and tags, there is a many to many relationship. I'll go into my terminal and show you the data as well. What exactly is in these models to do that. We have to run command NPX Prisma studio. This should bring up my Prisma studio with all the database models. So you can see the user model is there. We have got three records, John, Mike, Mark. I'll go into my to do's model. You have got three models, each aligned to one of the users. And then at last we have got our tags model. And each of the tag is aligned to one of the to-dos. So that was the activity which we have done in the previous video. In this video, we are going to use the data which we have prepared in the previous video for our interaction using the code. So the very first thing which we are going to do is we are going to install the Prisma client. Let me stop this Prisma studio and then we are going to install the Prisma client. To install this, we have to type the command npm install at prisma slash client. 
this will install the prisma client on our project and then once the prisma client is installed we have to generate the prisma client directory so let it get installed then we'll run another command called npx prisma generate what this command is going to do it is going to pick up all the models which we have identified in schema.prisma and it is going to create the layer under prisma client so that prisma client can understand how to interact with the database what all columns are available what all attributes we have assigned for example we have assigned a default attribute it is an id column as well in the users so all these activities will be carried out with the prisma client after installing the prisma client on our project we have to create the utilities to in enable this prisma client on our project so to do that i am going to create a folder called utils i'll create here utils and under utility folder i am going to create one file called prisma client.js under this file we are going to initialize our prisma client why we are doing this in a separate file because when you do more than 10 connections in next.js application you will start seeing some warning messages in your console and it is always recommended to have only one instance available while doing the uh, prisma client initialization so let's do that i'm going to initialize a variable with the name of prisma i'm going to identify whether the process is running in production or is it in the development mode if it is in production i'm going to initialize with a new prisma client otherwise i'm going to check if the global prisma is initialized or not if it is not initialized then i am going to initialize global dot prisma equals to new prisma client and then i am going to set our variable with the global dot prisma at the end i am going to export this prisma variable which we just declared and give it a save so that's how we have created our prisma client utility the other utility which we are going to create is to interact with database so let's name this get query output dot js this will be nothing but just a variable which we are exporting out of our js file so query data equals to async function this will be a arrow function which we are returning and then let's give a simple hello world text here and return this query output let me rename this variable to query output why we have created another utility function got called get query output the reason for creation is we want to abstract or isolate our queries in the utility functions we can name these variables like get all users the another function could be get a single user another function could be get highest salary so for each of the activity you can create a different function and based on that you can isolate the methods for interacting with the database i'm going to revert all the changes now so this is my query data async function which i'm returning and then to use this query data utility function what we have to do we have to go into the app router and i am going to create one folder location query 
output this is just a route where I'm going to create page.js and I'm going to create a functional component for this page on this page I am going to call this method query output equals to await and the uh, method name was query data you can see on the top query data method got imported from utility get query output since this is a asynchronous function what we have to do we have to mark it as async and this is a function now the data of the query data will be stored in query output variable we have we can do console.log and since the data will be coming as json we, we have to stringify the data output so that's what we are doing and i'm going to just beautify this by passing two parameters null and two so we are done with our basic setup and we can jump into the methods to interact with the database but before doing that let us run this application and see how it is behaving to do that i'm going to say npm run dev it is going to run my next day's application on the localhost 3000 url let's go to this the route which we created is query output let it get loaded for the first time it takes some time so bear with me yes the page is loaded now and if you look at the console the console says hello world that means the utility function which you just created is returning the appropriate values so the very first method which we are going to talk about is find many the find many method in prisma allows you to get all the records from a model from the database let's see how we can run this find many method i'm going to delete everything from my utility function and what i'm going to do i'm going to create a try catch block why I'm creating try catch block because if some error occurred during the data interaction database interaction then we have to catch the error as well so in the try block we can query the database in the catch block we will catch the error so I'm going to say console.log error and in the try block what we have to do we have to query the table so this will be query output equals to await and then what we have to do we have to use the prisma client which we just created during the beginning of video so we have to import prisma from the prisma client and then use this prisma dot users dot find many method return the query output and the moment you click save if I go back to the terminal if I go back to the terminal you should be able to see all the data from the users model is displayed in your terminal what one thing which I'm going to do right now is I'm going to close this folder location and I'm going to bring this terminal on the right hand side so that we can write queries on the left hand side and on the right hand side we can see the results instantly I am going to bring my terminal on the right hand side and I am going to delete other instances of the terminal perfect on the left hand side I am going to save word wrap so that it looks a bit better set so on the left hand side you can see the query on the right hand side you can see the output so the very first method is find many it is used to get the data from the users model 
all the rows from the users model. The last thing which we are going to do in this query data method is we have to add a finally block. In this finally block, we have to say prisma dot disconnect because we don't want our database to be connected all the time with our application. I clicked save button again and then you can see the results are populated. The database connection has been created and at the end of the block, the database got disconnected from our application. So that's how you use find many method. Now let's talk about the another feature under this find many method. What if you want to select a specific column? To do that, we have to use the select keyword and then we have to identify the list of columns you want to get the result of. So I want first name true, last name true. I'm going to clear the terminal and click save. You can see on the right hand side, all the data is appearing, all three records are appearing, but only with first name and last name, nothing beyond that. So that's how you can select specific columns in your query. The second thing which you can do is to restrict the data from your where clause. How you are going to apply with the where clause? You can add a where condition in your find many method. Simply say where and say first name equals to John. Clear the terminal and hit save. You can see the data where the first name is John is appearing on the right hand side. What if you want to have a specific keyword search? For example, you want to search, give me all the people name, those who are starting with M. So you can again go into the hierarchy and say first name starts with M. Clear the terminal and if I hit save again, you can see all the users starting with M, Mike and Mark are displayed on the right hand side. The next thing which we are going to talk about is the parent child relationship. In this example, we are able to see only the user record, but there are childs like to do. There is another child called tags. How to view the childs of the parent? Let us see very quickly. So I'm going to delete this entire thing and I'm going to use the include keyword. This include keywords allows us to identify specific columns, specific child models to be included in our query. So if I say to do, include to do and say it is true, clear the terminal and save it. You can see on the right hand side, all the user records are displayed, but this time we are able to see the to-dos as well. This is the second user. It has got one to-do and third user does not have any to-do. What if you want to go one layer further? You want to see the tags under the to-do. You can do that as well. So you have to go one layer further and say include tags true clear the terminal and save it oops there is a problem what we have to do they i think the schema name is tag so give it a save and you can see for the user number one the first name is John. It has got one to do by groceries. It has got two tags. This to do has got two tags, grocery and shopping. The another to do is move garden. And the tag is 
sure the second user second to do and the tag against that to do third user does not have any to do so no tags are displayed against it you can restrict again this entire include block with the where condition for example let's do the same thing where first name starts with j if we write down the query like this then it says give me all the user records including to do including tags but the username should start with j clear out the terminal and give it a save you can see only one record john smith is returned from the query output the next thing which we are going to cover is conditional output for example let me remove this and say select first name true last name true and the first name should start with m we'll get two records mike jones and mark booker what if we want to add more conditions to it what we can do we can simply say we another condition in your where block and we can say a uh, last name sorry it should be somewhere here on this level so and and it will be an array of objects in this array of object we can say first name starts with m m and comma and validated should be equal to true what we are looking for all the users those who are starting their name with m and their status is true validated status so clear the terminal and give this a quick save only mic is validated nothing apart from that has got this condition validated what if we change this condition to or now it ask the user should start with m and the valid or the validated status is true give me the results so if i clear the terminal again and give this a quick save you should be able to see all the users starting with m or having get uh, have the status as true so that's how you can apply and or not condition i can do the not condition as well so let's say i want to see all the records where the first name does not start with m if i give it a quick save you should be able to see john smith because his name does not start with m the next thing which we are going to cover is distinct if you want to get the distinct values out of the system so let me remove this entire thing and let's see i want to see the distinct created date created at okay so i am going to say this select created at as true and i am going to use one more keyword called distinct and i have to pass the column name where i want the distinct value once i click on the save button you can see three distinct values are appearing here where the users are created let's try to do see some other value maybe i want to see the validated column distinct values give it a save we have got two distinct values in the validated column true and false so though that's how you can use the distinct values in your query 
Before moving further, a quick note, you can't have select and include both at the same time in a same call in Prisma. That is a limitation which we are dealing with. So the next method which we are going to talk about is find unique. So find unique method allows you to get the unique values from the system to let us see a quick example of it. Find unique and here we can identify a condition where ID equals to one. Let me clear my console and give it a quick save. You can see the unique value John Smith has appeared for us. Can we use first name here? First name John? No. Prisma does not allow you to find uniqueness on a non-ID column. I'll show you very quickly our schema.prisma file. In this schema.prisma file, we identified ID column as ID and that's why we were able to query the find unique record. If you want a column to be identified and available under find unique method, you have to identify that column as either ID or unique. So that is the, that's how you can use the find unique method. Now the next method which we are going to talk about is group by. This is a aggregation function where we can aggregate the values of a selected column. I'll give you a quick example and then you will be able to understand a bit more. So group by prisma dot users group by and we have to identify by which column you want to get this group by done and then what is the resultant you want to see. So I am giving underscore count this is aggregation function which will be allowing us to see the count of validated users okay so let me clear the terminal give this a quick save and you can see we have got two users those who are validated and one user who is not validated from the system so that's how you can use the group by function there are more aggregate functions which i am going to talk about in the later sections the next method which we are going to talk about is count. So the count method allows you to see how many records we have got in a specific model. So I'm going to give it a quick save. I'm using the users model. It has got three records. If I click save, it should give me three. So three records are present in my users model. If I try to give a condition here first name equals to John it should give me the resultant after running this query so only one user is available in the system where the first name starts with John so that's how you can restrict your counts as well if you want to do a database query on this method now the next set of methods which we are going to talk about is aggregate. The aggregate method allows you to get the consolidated value or you can say the calculated values from the system. For example, you can see you want to see the maximum creation date what was the latest user created into the system you want to see who was the first user created into the system you want to see what was the count of the users created on a specific date so to do all of these things you can use your aggregate functions the very first function method which we are going to talk about is min created at true so if i say min created at true that means we are looking for the minimum date where the users are created. I'm going to click a save button and oops, spelling is wrong. Aggregate. 
my bad clear the terminal give it a save so minimum creation date was 11th of august 2023 at this time if i want to see the maximum creation date i can add that column as well created at true give it a save and you should be able to see minimum creation date was this maximum creation date was at 23 hours on 11th of august if you want to see the count you can do that as well so underscore count and created at equals to true if i give it a save you should be able to see the minimum creation date is this maximum creation date is this and count of created at is three so that's how you can restrict your query in an aggregated way now the next method which we are going to talk about is sorting how to sort your data coming out of your query so we'll use the again the same method find many and i'm going to delete everything let's give this a condition where first name starts starts with m clear the terminal and save this so we have got two records now i want to order this data based on their last names what we can do after the where clause we can identify order by and then what is my order by last name and sequence will be ascending the last name uh, B Booker should come first and John should come second so let me clear the terminal give it a save you should be able to see the ID 3 is coming on top and ID 2 is coming on the bottom because we have applied this order by clause if we change it to de descending then it will flip back to the original order ID number 2 is first and ID number 3 is second if you want to have multiple orders what you can do you can create a array of object in the order by and then identify how you want to order them so last name should be ascending and then maybe created at is descending if you want to have a combination of order by then you can use the array of objects give it a quick save you should be able to see mark booker is coming first because as well as you have got the creation date if two mark bookers were available in system then those will be sorted based on the creation date in descending order so that's how you can use your sorting mechanism now the next method which we are going to talk about is skip or take the skip is used skip and take is used for the pagination functionality pagination is nothing but if you go to any blog website you see one two three four when you click on the page number four it brings all the blog posts available on the page number four you can achieve the same functionality in your prisma by using skip and take keywords so i'm going to remove everything from this find many method and let's say how how skip and take works if i say skip one from our user model and give this a quick save you can see it has skipped the first record altogether and it has displayed second and third record if i say skip two it will skip the first two records and give me the third record as an output so skip function is used to skip the starting values from the database okay now if i skip one and then take if i use the take method and say take one 
let's see the result so it is taking only one record out of the entire data set so we have skipped one record and the remain from the remaining data set we are taking only one output record so if i say two from the rem remaining records it will give me two records if i say skip zero that means we are not skipping anything and we are taking only two records out of the system then it should show me the first two records if i save this it will show me the first and second record only so by using the skip and take combination you can achieve the pagination uh, functionality whenever the user clicks a certain number of page you can provide that page number in the skip and then you can show the number of records on that page by adjusting the take number you can assign this to a variable the last thing which is very interesting is how to run a bespoke query on your database if you are not really comfortable to run your prisma uh, methods so what you can do you can go into prisma and then you can say query raw method and then what you have to do you have to in double ticks you have to write down your query select star from test dot users so that was the database table name and we are running this query directly onto our database without using any method let me clear this save this and you can see the same results are achieved there are main, many drawbacks of using this method firstly you will lose the hierarchy if you are joining multiple tables second thing this method is prone to sql attacks if you are passing any variables from your external system to this query you will lose the data or there is a chance of sql injection attack and it is not recommended to write down direct sql queries on your utility methods so it is always best to use the provided methods from prisma the last thing which we are going to talk about is how to get the parameters from your page and run a specific query in your system so what we can do let me delete everything from here and simply query our find main users model so in this what we are going to say where first name equals to and i am going to create one variable here john and i'm going to say query so if i remove clear this terminal and then you can see the query is working fine rather than hard coding or initializing it with the data what we can do we can assign this with search params and from where these search params will be coming search params will be coming from the page where they we are calling our this utility method so let's add search params as a parameter and whatever value we are getting as search params we are going to assign this to our query and then query will run under this method give it a save you will get all the data because we don't have any search parameter value let's go to our page from where we are running this utility function in this what we can do we can identify the search params provided by next.js and then use the search params into our method parameters so search params dot query if we use this rather than showing you like this let me console.log it first so 
console dot log search params search params and then give it a save go to our page go to our web page and then in the query output what we can say q equals to a b c d if we hit enter if we go back to the console you should be able to see this search param object okay so it should be json dot stringify search params in the brackets give it a save and hit enter again on this page on the console you can see the search params query was ABCD so whatever query we have used on the top and whatever data we have queried for will be represented in this format now what we are going to do we are going to pass this q into our function the utility function to get the data restricted so search params dot q give it a save and let's try to go to the page and run it again as you can see search param was q a b c d and nothing was there in the database with a b c d name as first name if i change this a b c d to john hit enter you can see in the back end the john record is displayed if i change it to mark again the query got changed and mark record is displayed so that's how you can get parameters out of your pages query your database and interact with the output of that database record hope you are enjoying our content do give this video a thumbs up subscribe to our channel thank you so much